I want to talk about the times that we're living in, you know, and the biblical prophecy that the Bible had already warned us to tell us about how these times would be and how we are supposed to overcome and how we're supposed to live in these end times. The Bible already forewarned us about the evil that is going to be rampant in the last days. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, where the Bible was warning about the end times, the Bible says that in the last days, people are going to be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. And also another thing that I want us to really take note of in this verse is where the Bible says that in the last days, people are going to be despisers of good. They are going to despise what is good and they are going to praise evil. And the Bible also talks about these kind of people in the book of Philippians, where the Bible says that these people loved evil and hated good, that they were proud of the things that they were supposed to be ashamed of, and they were ashamed of the things that they are supposed to be proud of. And the Bible tells us that the destination of these people is hell. We're living in, in such dark times. We are complete darkness right now. is covering the entire earth. Sin has filled the whole earth in a way that a person who wants to get away from the sin is the one who's going to seem strange. The very things that people are supposed to be ashamed of are the very things that in our generation and in this day and age, here in the last days, they are the very things that people take pride in. They'll speak evil of the good. And that is exactly the kind of times that we're living in. We're living in the end times whereby people are taking pride in abominable things before the Lord. Satan has captured the hearts of people in this generation and he has twisted their minds so that they are unable to think properly, so that they, the very things that normally they are supposed to be ashamed of, they are the very things that they take pride in. People take pride in evil. People take pride in being seen drinking. People take pride in being seen drinking. Like they want to brag about how, how much they party. People want to brag about all the worldly things. People take pride and show off sin. The very things that people are supposed to be ashamed of are the very things that people are so proud of and embrace. And when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that let he who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So as children of God, God himself, he has called us out of the world. And the Bible says that we are not of this world. Therefore, we are aliens. We are pilgrims. And that means that in order for you to be a child of God, you are going to seem like an alien. You are going to seem like a stranger. Why? Because your, your way of doing things is going to be so completely different from what the rest of the world wants to do. Everything, your speech, your, your dressing, your actions, everything, your way of thinking, things that entertain you, everything is going to be so different. So that is guaranteed that a child of God is always going to be different. Why? Because thick darkness covers the earth and the, the darkness has overtaken the people of the world. And as children of the light, our light is seen when we are different from the world by being obedient to the Lord, regardless of, even if you are the only one who is obeying the Lord where you are. Brothers and sisters, we need to have this loyalty to the Lord Jesus, whereby it's not even going to matter even if we are the only ones. You have to be different even if you are alone. By being different from the world, you are shining the light of Jesus Christ in this dark world. And you are leading the way and showing the people of the world that this is what they're supposed to be doing. This is how they're supposed to be speaking. This is how they're supposed to be dressing. This is how they're supposed to be acting. This is how they're supposed to be doing things. And that is why even the Bible warns us and says that do not conform to the world. God doesn't want Christians to become like the world in the way that they dress, in the way that they talk, in the way that they act, in the way that they think, in the things that they watch, the things that they listen to. 
God wants that difference between the world and his people. Why? Because we are different, because we are pilgrims. We are just traveling on this earth. The Bible says that we're, lo we're looking forward to receive our heavenly home. We are not home here on the earth. So you are going to be different from the people of the world. So many times when children of God find themselves in these, in these circumstances, where the difference between them and the people of the world is so obvious. Many times Satan ad starts to attack them with feelings of shame. For you to be ashamed of being obedient to Jesus and for you to be ashamed of good. The people of the world are so proud of the evil that they do. People brag about evil. People brag about how much alcohol they drink. People, some people brag about how many girlfriends they have. Some people brag about all these sinful things. They take pride in the very things they should be ashamed of. So when a child of God finds themselves uh, being different from everyone else because it's so obvious and everyone will, will notice that there's something different about you. So many times, children of God start to be ashamed. They start to be ashamed of this difference. They wish that they could just become like everyone else. They wish that the difference between them and the people of the world was not something that was so evident. And so they begin to feel ashamed. But we need to be courageous in this dark world and to shine the light of Jesus Christ. And we need to ask the Lord to arm us with courage so that instead of being ashamed of being different from the people of the world, whenever you are in a situation where all your friends are okay with sinning, or all the people around you are okay with living a sinful life, and you live that sinful life, and they all start to consider you an alien of which you are. You know, they start to consider you as a stranger, you know, as a strange person different from them of which you are because you are not of this world. And so you do not need to be ashamed whenever you are in that situation. Do not be ashamed. But instead, we need to start to, to spend more time meditating upon the Lord so that the Lord may increase in our lives because the more that we meditate you know the bible says where your treasure is that is where you had to be so if you're spending a lot of time just caring about earthly things even your heart is going to be on those earthly things and if you're spending a lot of time on spiritual things even your heart is just going to be on those spiritual things we need to start to meditate on the lord much more so that whenever you are in that situation where you because you're so different from the people of the world and instead of you being ashamed of Jesus Christ, just so that you can fit in with everybody else, just so that you can seem like you are just normal like everybody else, instead of that, we need to start taking joy, taking pleasure in being different by being obedient to Jesus. So we don't need to be ashamed of obeying Jesus Christ, but it is something that we need to embrace with so much joy. You know, instead of you being ashamed of the fact that you don't, you don't want to participate in dirty talk or in dirty jokes, don't be ashamed of it. Instead, you need to, you need to take that action, you know, with so much joy, your obedience to Jesus, start approaching it instead with so much joy you know, with so much joy, so much happiness that you're different from the world because you're showing the world an example. You need to truly embrace the kingdom that you come from and you need to proudly proclaim it, you know, like unashamedly proclaim his kingdom here on the earth. That is what we need to do and we do that in our everyday life. So. It needs to sink down deep in our hearts that we are not from here, that we are from another kingdom, that the kingdom that we come from, it has different standards than the standards of the world. It has different standards of how we can dress than the standards of the world. It has different standards of, of uh, how we can speak than the standards of the world. It has different standards of what we can watch, what we can listen to than the standards of the world. We don't need to obey Jesus in a way 
filled with shame just because we're different from the world. It's not something we should approach with shame, but rather we should approach it wholeheartedly, willingly and joyfully because we're so happy to belong to God's kingdom and because we're not ashamed of him and because by being different we're shining the light and not only are we shining the light but we're also showing the people of the world an example that this is how God wants things to be done that this is how God wants us to handle conversation you know that God doesn't want us to engage in dirty conversation that God wants us to dress in a way that is modest and respectable, that God wants us to only listen and watch things that are going to edify our spirit, not things that are going to glorify sin. A few years ago, I was praying with my husband and my sister, and I remember on that day, one thing that the Lord told me, I had a vision of a flag, and when I saw this flag, I knew that it is the flag of the kingdom of heaven, that God was using this flag to represent a flag of the kingdom of heaven. So God was speaking to me and telling me that you don't belong to this earthly kingdom and you need to know that the earthly kingdom is far inferior than our kingdom, that the earthly kingdom is far below our kingdom. Therefore, don't be led, don't be governed by the standards of the earth but you need to be governed by the standards of our kingdom. You need to speak the way that we speak in our kingdom. You need to dress the way that we dress in our kingdom. You need to act the way that we act in our kingdom. That is what the Lord God was telling me. And when the Lord God was telling me that, I started to see the heavenly flag rising higher and higher and higher and higher. And then I got the understanding that all these things that the Lord God was telling me of how we're supposed to do things differently from the world because we belong to another kingdom, because we belong to a different kingdom. I had the realization that the more that we become different from the world, we are raising the heavenly flag higher and higher and higher. By you dressing different than the people of the world, you are raising the, the heavenly flag higher. How? You're making it more visible to the world. You're making the kingdom of God to become more visible to the world. When your speech is different from the people of the world, you're making God's kingdom to become more visible, you know. Like people are going to see what the kingdom of God is really about through our lives. So we don't need to be ashamed. And another thing that I want to add is, you know, here on earth, there are people who are children of God. But at this, and at the same time, there are, pe there are people who are living in sin because they are still in darkness, like they don't realize the truth, they don't know the truth. And then there are also people who are in the kingdom of darkness because they are serving Satan, they are serving Lucifer, they are the Nephilim, and some are even Satanists. So these people, they are sent onto the earth to set a very bad example in order to lead a rebellion against God. And they do that mostly through the entertainment industry because they know that people copy whatever they see on TV and you know social media and all those things. But these agents of Lucifer don't just end there. When they see a child of God being obedient to the Lord, they begin to launch demonic errors in the spiritual realm. And those errors are only going to manifest in that person's life like thoughts. Like a child of God who's being obedient to the Lord. Demons and the agents of Satan are going to be throwing errors at them, telling them, this is too shameful. It's so shameful how you're dressing. It's so shameful that you cannot even laugh at this dirty joke. It's so shameful that you cannot do this and that. It's so shameful that you're not able to go to this worldly party. So that person is in the physical, okay? And those things are all happening in the spirit. But all those things are just going to manifest to that person like thoughts. You know, they're just going to think, oh, it's so shameful that I'm, um, I'm doing this in obedience to God. I should be like everybody else. I should be this and that. You don't know that Satan is actually launching a full-fledged attack to get you off the narrow way. When a child of God is walking on the narrow way of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ, Satan doesn't just watch them and leave them alone, but he's going to do everything in his power to get them off the narrow way. What he wants is your human soul. What he wants is your soul. 
So he's going to use Sometimes Satan is going to use people around you. They're going to start telling you, no, you know, you're taking Jesus too seriously. You are doing this and that, you know, you're doing this and that, you know, just a lot of things to discourage you. But in reality, it's just Satan who wants to get you off the narrow path. But those very people, if you die today, the only thing that they're going to be able to say when they hear about your death after influencing you into sin, they're just going to say, oh, this person is dead, too bad. Or they're going to say, oh, I'm so sorry, or my condolences. And that's it. While you, who was trying to please people's expectations, you would have gone to hell. Where the flames are never quenched, where the worm doesn't die. So who is more important to please? Is it God or man? So we need to be aware of the enemy's schemes. We need to be alert spiritually. We need to, to put on the full armor of God. And we need to be armed with the word of God in order to defeat the enemy. And we need to be armed with the word of God. So we need to spend a lot of time in prayer if we are to have the strength to overcome. Because Satan is not giving up. But this is an encouragement to you to say, don't be ashamed of Jesus Christ. Don't obey Jesus in a way that is filled with shame, you know, just wishing like, oh, you know, I just wish I could go and, and do this sin, you know, so that I can become like everybody else. But God wants us to be born of the Spirit of God. And we only get that when we pray and when we seek God with all our hearts. We're going to be born of the Spirit of God. So we need to seek God with all our hearts. Until God completely transforms our hearts, until he has circumcised our hearts, so that not only do we stay away from sin, just because we're scared of going to hell, but we're going to stay away from sin because we actually hate it. Because God's DNA is what we have. Because now we have God's DNA. We love what he loves. We hate what he hates. So that we are completely filled with the Spirit of God, and we are born of God. We cannot overcome by just knowing a list of things and saying, I'm going to stay away from this and that and that. But you don't pray. You need to pray every single day. You need to realize that you cannot win this battle unless you are with Jesus Christ. So take courage and overcome.